I set out on a narrow way many years ago, hoping I would find true love along that broken road. Well, I got lost a time or two, and I, I wiped my brow and kept pushing through. But well, I couldn't see how every sign points straight to you. Well, every long lost dream led me to where you are. Now others who broke my heart, they were like northern stars, pointing me on my way into your loving arms. This much I know is true. That God bless the broken road and let me stray to you. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm with Marcus Collins. Hello, Kat, Marcus. You look, beautiful. you look beautiful as always. Gorgeous. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank, um, you. thank you for doing it. I haven't talked to you in such a long time. Too long. Too long. I've been trying to think how long it's been since I met you. And I think we're at 10 years so that you were in Las Vegas and we had the show mm -hmm. opening of uh, America's Got Talent live here yeah. at Planet Hollywood. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I remember seeing you there, but I, I met you way back. On yes, you a show did. That, a little show that you did for just a few years <laughs> uh, when I was a uh, struggling actor in, in New York and doing mm -hmm. extra work. And I finally got my first couple lines on that little show that some folks might know you from of course so but uh, yeah so i met you briefly then mm -hmm. but then really met you in las vegas uh, with america's got talent live right and i'll yeah. never forget meeting you because you said to me we've actually met before <laughs> and i said we have because i have a very good memory and so uh you said yes you had been on one life to live and that you had been uh, an extra and an under five and that this is the part that really made me feel great. You said that I was really nice <laughs> to you. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because then, not, not everyone is, unfortunately, you know, in the business. And, and I, I've been in New York uh, working, doing a lot of extra work for a while. And uh, I took a class with Tori, the casting director, mm -hmm. took her class. She was awesome. And um, I had worked on As a World Turns, I worked on Guiding Light and uh, a few other shows and movies. And then I finally got my chance to work on One Life to Live, which oh. was I think July of 2004 or two, 2005 or something. Okay, first think time. about this. Yeah. We're about to head into July. So we're about to have a One Life to Live anniversary with you because that, and that was a long time ago, you know, so. Yeah, 16 years ago. Wow. Right, so what's yeah. amazing and why I love this story is because there's so many people out there and that have you know a dream and and um, they don't know, even know how to believe in themselves right now because everything is so discombobulated and nothing is happening and you know one day it will be happening again. But I love our story because that we met when you were there and then you went off and joined this really great little group, um, the Texas Tenors. And I want to know how the three of you came together because I, I'm not sure you actually knew each other very well at that point. So, uh, but I don't know the story exactly. So how did the three of you get together to go on America's Got Talent? Well, JC and I had, been, it's, it's myself, JC and John. Right. And JC and I have been friends since uh, 2000. We met on a cruise ship. So we worked on a cruise ship together. I was sort of the pop singer. He was more of the classical singer on the ship and uh, was on the Celebrity Millennium, which was a brand new ship at the time. And I had never been out of the country before. So it was my very first time out of the country. And um, the ship was sailing from Europe, from France, mm -hmm. being built in France. So I met JC there and we became fast friends. Um, my father passed away in December, just before that, in 1999, yeah. December. And so I instantly connected with JC and we've been like brothers ever since. And then uh, JC met John working on a construction site in Kansas City. So wow. JC was doing, 
his guest entertainer work on cruise ships and working around the country as a singer. But when he was home, he'd do these odd jobs uh, working construction. So he met John. John was, and this is true, um, he heard Nessun Dorma, like in one of the rooms off uh, and on the construction site. And he thought, who's, who's playing a recording of Nessun Dorma? Who's listening to classical music? So he went around the corner and it was actually John singing. Wow. Nessun Dorma, he's so good. And so uh, they struck up a conversation about classical music, about being tenors and about struggling because, you know, they're both working construction and, you know, not really working in the business too much as singers at that time. And, um, and I was in Los Angeles trying to make it because my agent, um, who I'd had in New York, she said, oh, you know, you're in New York, but you should go to Los Angeles because that's where you're going to break in and you're going to do all these big things. So I was in Los Angeles uh, trying to make it. And JC said, you know, we should audition for America's Got Talent. I've got a buddy. He's a singer. He's a tenor. And uh, John, you're not doing anything right now. I'm not. Let's form a trio of tenors oh. and let's audition for America's Got Talent. I love the show. I watch it with my wife, my kids. Let's let's audition for the show. Mm -hmm. So we put a tape together. He, you know, he called me. I wasn't doing anything. I had an audition for a, a Kelly Clarkson music video, I think, at the time. Yeah. I didn't get it. <laughs> so, um, so I said, hey, you know, I'll come and, and let's, let's do this. And, and we uh, took some songs that he had done in his solo show and uh, John rearranged them for three voices, three tenor voices. And we sang them for JC's wife's pageant because she was a former Miss Kansas and her, fam her family does a lot of the, uh, the pageants, the Miss USA network. So um, yeah, so we put together a tape, sent it to America's Got Talent. They called us down to Houston and uh, I had had a place in Houston for a while doing the cruise ships. JC mm -hmm. had stayed there with his sister for a while and they brought us to Houston and we thought, well, why don't we just be the Texas tenors? That's where we're auditioning and we're all connected to Texas in some way. John went to school there. I live there uh, actually here. I'm in Texas now, mm -hmm. but, uh, and JC for a time. So, uh, yeah, so we auditioned for the show as the Texas tenors and, uh, we put together our tailcoats. Um, one was from Goodwill and one, uh, we had boots in the, you know, a couple of us had boots, JC, John bought a pair of boots. Uh, we all had buckles. Um, I had a bolo tie. Uh, I think JC had one when John borrowed his and John brought us a couple of tuck shirts and then we got a tail coat from Goodwill for like $5 and, and we just put our group together and auditioned for the show. And then, uh, we went in front of the judges, which is, uh, one of the judges, of course, the Hoff. Oh, and, I forgot uh, about that. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. See, we're connected in so many ways. Yes. We're, we're really connected and it keeps, keeps coming back. And um, yeah, you know, we, we got through to the finals of the show it was season four and um, it just was the right time, the right season with uh, Sharon and, and the Hoff and Piers Morgan. And uh, we started booking shows right away. Um, and you, then we you, did you the Americas. Before the, the season was over, people saw you on the show and wanted yeah, people, to check people the saw center. us on the show. They started emailing, they started calling. Wow. And um, we luckily had the foresight to kind of, you know, get the website and, and uh, we had uh, some material that we wanted to record. So we put together an album quick before the show went live, mm -hmm. before America's Got Talent went live. So we had something to sell online. Um, and you know, 2009 was kind of the start of this, the social media boom with the Facebook and Twitter. Did I just, did I just call it the Facebook? The I, Facebook. I just called it the Facebook. Like how old does that make me? Like for real. <laughs> the Facebook. Yeah. But I think I joined in 2008 or so. So you're right about that. But the Facebook, <laughs> I just can't believe this story because it is so Wow, it's so yeah. incredible and and it's very inspiring because here the three of you were with your own individual talents and your own individual struggles and you were, you know, all trying to just 
get by and do what you love and pursue your dreams. And it just went, you see, it was just took a left turn and a right turn and then no. landed you right into the place where you were supposed to be. And I really didn't know John. I mean, I knew JC. He was like a brother. He is like a brother to me. And I didn't really know John very well, but we clicked instantly and luckily and divinely because, you know, we've been partners now in a group for these last almost 11 years. And if and we did that. Have, yeah. Too, because I, most groups don't make it that long when there's like uh, uh, several people in a group. Somebody always kinds of freaks out. They kind of freak out mm -hmm. and they go solo and, and, and it breaks that magic up. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with going solo. As a matter of fact, right now, I think you're recording a solo album, but you're still I, with the tech centers. Yeah, I am. I'm recording a solo album. They, they've encouraged me to record it. And um, we're also recording our next uh, tenors record as well. So I'm down here in the studio in Waxahachie, Texas is where I live. Mm -hmm. And they're in Kansas City recording and I'm recording down here. Wow. And I'm sending files there for our tenors record. And then I'm mixing and recording my solo album, which is kind of a mixture of pop and country. Yeah. But I'm also working on a second album at the same time because there's so much music that I wanted to do. And, and I was so excited to to... You know, when you're in a group of three, it, it, it becomes, it's challenging because everybody has to agree on a song and all of a sudden I'm recording something and I can sing whatever I want. Oh, which I is, know. Which is something. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, it really is. I mean, I think, yeah. you know, but th that is so great that you're doing something for yourself, but you're also the group still very much, you know, together and, you know, you're yeah. recording a new album and you're in Branson a lot, right? When, when, we when are. we're not on second, lockdown. Right. The second recording is um, more Christian music. Mm -hmm. It's more faith based. Mm -hmm. And because there are so many songs that I wanted to sing, you know, my grandma, she's in her 90s. And I've been thinking a lot about her right now with with the COVID situation and my mom. And and there are songs that they wanted me to sing and um, hymns. So I've been putting together some hymns and uh, some contemporary Christian music and some originals. Um, there's an original called He's the Reason which is a beautiful uh, original song. And yeah, it's just, it's been, it's been a sort of internal um, spiritual journey for me recording because I've gone back and I've on this first pop record, I've recorded songs that I've been singing all my life to my family, to my friends mm -hmm. for functions, for um, graduations, for, for events, for, for funerals. I mean, it's, it's just been, it's almost like therapy in a way, recording all this music and putting it down with my grandma and my family in mind, you know? It's right. just been, it's been a really great and just incredible process. It really has, it has been. Well, yeah, I think um, anytime you do something from the spirit, it is always special. And uh, the, you, you, the tenors are really known for a lot of very inspirational music, mm -hmm. whether it was faith-based or not. Uh, I think you had, you've done gospel and you've mm -hmm. taken classic uh, things and put your three voices blended together so beautifully on them. And when I was in New York, I actually had a, a uh, harmony group. There were three of us and the three of us had been in Les Mis. So my favorite singing in the world, at least I, that I do, is always with another person or two people or three people just because of harmony and everything. It's doesn't it do something to your soul when you hear your voice blend with other people's and theirs with yours. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's one of those connections that it's, you can't, you can't duplicate it in any other way. Like you can't get that kind of thing from any, anything else because when you're harmonizing in a pure voice with someone else's pure voice and it becomes like one voice split, yeah, and it, there's the connection there that's that you can't duplicate. So I think that maybe some of the folks out there might want to hear you sing with the Texas Tenors at some point. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. I because, just you know. got goosebumps all the way up my back, <laughs> my neck, and down my arm. So that would be something I am putting on my list. I don't call it a bucket list because I don't intend to go anywhere, but it's just, I really would love that or with you or anything, because you know, one thing I love is your voice, Marcus Collins. And I oh. love JC's and John's voice as well, but 
there's just something about you that I have always clicked with and that, you know, I just think of you so fondly. I love when you pop in on my Facebook page and we have a quick chat or, you know, you're such a special human being. And, and that's why I think wanted you to me, come in. Think of me fondly when we said goodbye. Remember me once in a while. Catherine, please try. I think of you all the time, Marcus. I am. So, well, I just got goosebumps you? from your voice. I mean, really. Uh, did you audition there, for Broadway? Oh, what were you going to ask? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, tons, tons. That's a whole. That's a whole other. Uh, yeah. That's a whole other. <laughs> but yeah, too, you're too better much. off now. Like I, I, I was in an audition for uh, for Aida. For yes. Rodamaze. And it was a it was an immediate replacement that was needed. They needed an immediate replacement. It was actually for the uh, for course, but to understudy. And the guys, would, you know, you line up, and I, I know everybody out. Most people out there probably know the process, but you, you know, you, your agent gets you an appointment, or you, it's a cattle call. But this was an appointment, and you line up with with guys that look just like you, or are taller than you, or thinner than you, or more muscular than you. You know, it's that that scary audition thing in New York oh, yeah. and, and you're lined up and people go in and they sing eight bars or 16 bars of a song. They're cut off. They, they send them on their way. And you're, you, you're seeing guys going in and out like just so fast and so quick. So I go in and I'm thinking, I'm only going to be able to sing for a second for these people. And I love the show. Aida is one of my favorite shows. Oh. So I go in and I had to sing elaborate lives and and they, they had me start at the beginning and, and they'd be cutting everybody off. And I thought, no, I want to sing it. I want to sing it for you because I love this music. And I started, we all lead such elaborate lives, wild ambitions in our sights. And so I'm kind of, I'm still going, you know, and I'm thinking they're going to cut me off. So, Out in the fair of a heart survives days apart and I'm just keep I'm going and I'm still going and I'm going I sing the whole song oh my gosh all the way through the the choreographer is sitting there and she's crying she's crying the casting director didn't cut me off and he's like thank you so much thank you and I'm thinking I got it oh I yeah got this right oh I yeah the whole thing I mean everybody's going in and out and nobody I sang the whole, and you know, I'm walking out and the guys were like, wow, you know, he sang that whole song. He's probably going to get it. And of course I didn't get it because that's just, that's just the business, you know, and you can, and you can have these amazing moments in your life and you have to hold on to those amazing moments because you never know what's going to come from them mm -hmm. or if anything's going to come from them. But if it's an experience that that means something to you and experience that that experience meant something to me. I will never forget that moment in that room singing this music that I love for the people that it, I thought it mattered the most to at the time. And it was the most amazing experience for me. I didn't get the part, but I will never forget that. Moment. Yeah. You'll always, that's remember. a New York moment for me. It, yeah. And you know, I, I, and I just think that it's remarkable really that how you, how you all did end up doing exactly what you were meant to do. And we were just talking no. before the show real quick at you and I, and um, talking about how, when you are chasing something, you know, chasing a dream, chasing a thought, chasing a person, chasing, you know, whatever it is you're chasing. Uh, mm. And it's, and and I said it's so funny because you don't ever have to really let go of a dream. I but but loosen your grip on it is how I put it because if yeah. you stop squeezing in the life out of it, then it has room to breathe. And if it's meant to be, it will be because you're willing to do the work. So I think if there's anything that I want to leave the audience with that's watching this right now, and a lot of people will see it. Uh, because I'll also, uh, in addition to showing it on the show tonight, I will also uh, put the in, in, the interview in its entirety on my Facebook page to live, and and you can do the same with yours. But I think I would like to leave the audience with them. Um, well, let me let you leave the audience with about you know having a dream, and I, I would like you to actually 
say mm. your thoughts about that and what advice do you have for people and, and no matter what their dream is? Well, that, what you said, that, that means something, you know, that means something to me and it connects with me because, you know, here I was in New York and I was in Los Angeles and I was struggling and, and, and scraping every day and auditioning and, and going and going and, and striving for that dream. And you're right when you just kind of let go of your grip a little bit on it and you let it breathe a little bit, mm -hmm. like you said, then the dream takes on a completely new, beautiful form like the Texas tenors, because all I wanted to do was to, to sing and perform and move people and, and try to affect some kind of, some kind of uplifting positivity. You know, I wanted to share this inside of me and, 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 and move people and connect with people. And I thought that I needed to be on Broadway to do that. Or I thought I needed to be on One Life to Live to do that. Or I needed to be on, you know, a, a talk show or something to do that. And I realized with the tenors, suddenly I have this. I, we have this ability to get out there and connect with people and move people. We have people tell us stories every single day about how our music has affected them and about how, uh, what it means to them and yeah. connecting each of them through our music. You know, we have, we have people that have become lifelong friends now through the Texas tenors and, and there's nothing that I could have asked for more as a dream than that, you know, and, and that you're right. I have gotten that dream. I, ha I have, I, uh, and mm -hmm. I, you don't realize it until, wow, you just, again, you let, like you said, you just let it go a little bit and let it breathe. And then suddenly it becomes this beautiful thing. And I, yeah, I, people just, I hope people keep following their dreams. It's tough right now. It's, it's difficult. We get sad. You know, we, we um, get introverted because we're not talking to a lot of people, not socializing a lot, but, you know, call your family and, and get out and, and do a FaceTime and do a Zoom call or do this, with, with, your, with your amazing friends that you haven't seen in five or six years, but, and connect with them like we're connecting right now, because that's so, so important and it'll affect your life for, forever. You know, it, it, this, this will affect me for a long time because I love talking with you and seeing your shining face and you're just, you know. You gotta I, love it. And I, I know this is probably not, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but you have, I want to talk about you for just a second. Oh, okay. Marcus. No, I'm, please let me. Please okay, let me. all right. Because I never in my life have experienced a person who radiates light and love and radiates a positive energy. And you know that it's there because you have these, these un- unaffected souls, these beautiful animals coming to you and they're walking to you. They're, a deer comes up to you, oh, a, a chicken and a goat and, a, and dogs that are lost go to your house <laughs> to find their owner because they know that you can help them. I mean, you, you have the most amazing, beautiful spirit and it's like you're a living Snow White. You're like this living being that attracts love and the, mo the purest love, the purest, the purest life is the life of that animal that's untainted by the world. It's not affected by politics and not affected by the, the world that we live in. They, they, have their, they have their life, their pure life, that pure innocence of life, these animals, and they come to you. They come to you because you radiate that. And that, that is you. That is Kat Hicklin. That is you. And I, I appreciate you. And this is my chance to say it. And I'm going to say it. Loudly and proud, oh, and wow. own it because that is you. You are love and light, and a pure of heart, and beautiful, beautiful soul, and beautiful person. And thank you for well, including me in your my sphere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what? Marcus? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I in the old days would have went, oh no, no, no. But of course, you move me to tears because kindness is always something that gets me. But. I just want to say I receive it. And that's something that I have had to learn to do, you know, in life. And we all do, you know, we learn to receive uh, love and compliments and things that are sincere. And it, it does move me to tears because 
uh, it's a beautiful thing. And I wish that if anybody learns anything from watching this particular segment is to tell people how you feel because that just made me feel so great. And I do receive it. I. I believe it and I receive it. How's that? In the old days, I push it away. Yes. Now I say thank you. you know, so. and, and everybody out there needs to, if you have you have someone who means a lot to you, if mm -hmm. you have a hero, you have, it doesn't matter if you think they're not going to respond to you, send them a message. You know, if you, if you, you love Oprah and she has affected your life, send her a message. Yes. Because she wants, she needs to hear it too. Everybody needs to hear it because this is a hard life right now yeah folks this is tough yeah we're gonna get through it but it's gonna take this this kind of interaction to get through it i think i think so too and you know i also just want to say that it's a important time for all of us because it's a time of reimagining and reinventing not only our personhood but what we do what we might want to do how we want to do things how we want to relate to people you know and so it is a very important time as hard as it is for reimagining yourself and your place here and in a good way you know positive way so I can't think of anybody to put this message out there with better than you. You are also a beaming ray of light, and uh, I love everything about you. You're really great. And uh, do, you like, do you like the fact that you had to go and do a call with someone in Texas to become like to have Vegas back here? Did you did you know you were calling to become part what? of your <laughs> world? Right. I'm part of your um, world in there right now. Yes, I love that. Let's see. How's that? Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you make my collection complete? Come on down. <laughs> Wouldn't I be the one who has everything? Everything. I'll see. <laughs> see? We, we have to sing with you. We, we have to. I absolutely am down for it. And also, before I go, I just remembered that you were going to maybe come out to film a music video at our ranch you called yes. me about that and uh i was going to direct it with todd we were going to just you know, do it as a as a um as a love project you know yeah, I mean, we're going to come and stay for like a week and just well just let you create. know we still have it so if you want to come sit on hay bales and sing and make something uh. special we still have that ranch and it's very safe out there because it's in the middle of nowhere. And so anytime, how's, how's that? You know what? We're going to do it. Yeah. I mean, people say, oh, sure. That sounds, that sounds fun. Actually, <laughs> yeah. we need to do that. And we're we going to take you up on it because it's an opportunity that you just can't. And we have plenty of room for the three of you and even Perfect. mates. So that would be great. I love you, Marcus. <laughs> Thank you for, for, love you for too, saying Kat. yes Thank to you. this. Thank you for having me on. This has been so much fun. And, and, you know, thanks for, you know, letting me share this time with you and, and your, all your people out there, your supporters out there. This is, it's meant a lot to me. Well, I, my yeah. home from my home in Waxahachie to you in Las in Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Siempre en ti, junto a mí. Lonely Riverside, wait for me, wait for me. I'll be coming home, wait for me. Oh, my love.
That was amazing.